Hey everybody, uh, welcome to another teardown video uh, featuring stuff that Frank bought. This is another tool shed product uh, from the same family as that LED uh, work light I took apart in the other video. Uh, this one came from the same store, that Rural King store, uh, when I was out in the Midwest a few weeks ago. And this is one of those solar-powered walkway lights with a motion detector. And it works pretty well, actually. I um, set it up inside just kind of for the fun of it, you know, to see how well it worked. And it's, uh, it's bright. Uh, the LEDs are kind of an unpleasant color. They're those bluish ones, but, you know, it does throw some light. Uh, the other thing I didn't like about it was it stays on all the time once it gets dark. I guess if you're using it to mark a uh, walkway, that makes sense. But I wish they would have given you an option to disable that feature. Otherwise, it just goes on to like a dim when it gets dark. And then when the motion detector would be triggered, it would go on full brightness for a minute or so. I didn't want to have it on all night inside to have that blue, you know, kind of harsh blue LED glow going on so I modified it um, so that it only would turn on to the dim lighting when the uh, when the motion detector was triggered uh, and now what I want to do is I want to actually change out that LED array for some uh, warm white ones or possibly some plain white ones and just run them dim but I think warm white will be nice and I'll show you what I did and how it all works. So it's just those four screws and then this plate pops off. The, uh, they do actually have some attempts at waterproofing since it is outside and there's a, uh, a rubber gasket shoved in here. You know it's only three-sided but to be fair this is the side that faces down and you'd want water to drip out that way anyway. So then uh, you can see part of my modification. I up the battery size and I just have a piece of gaffer's tape in here just to kind of keep everything from rattling. So let's peel that out of the way. Now the original battery was this one. Here you are. 1-800-822-8831. Recycle. So this is a 680 milliamp hour, 3.6 volt. I can't really, it's kind of hard to see. The numbers are SEUS145G0VR2 space R2. And then what I imagine is the uh, battery number. Uh, there's a G and then a space and then 2686211XL27E 680 milliamp hour. So there it is, the lithium ion. So anyway, I uh, pulled that one out. I don't know if I'm going to keep it or do something else with it or just throw it out. And then I put in a true 600 milli or 680 milliamp hour battery uh, that I can unplug. I put a, a set of connectors, just some pins down there to plug into. And then on this side, this is, I think that's for the um, motion detector. I'm not really sure. I didn't really look up that chip number. That might just be a microcontroller. I think that actually, no, I take that back. I think this is just a microcontroller because this uh, motion detector is one of those um, silicon wafer type that measures the change in light. It's not like a true uh, microwave transmitter receiver motion detector. So anyway, uh, when the motion detector triggers the microcontroller, the microcontroller turns on a transistor, which then turns on the LEDs. Now they had some other resistors in here. You can see one of them I left just kind of hanging off to the side, 
but I put that 2 ohm resistor there, uh, or that uh, 27 ohm resistor, or wait, is that two, 270 ohm resistor? Ah, there we go. There was a 2 ohm, but I put a, there's a 270 in there now that limits the current to dim out that uh, LED array in the front. So normally what it would do is when the whole thing is on, it turns on one of these transistors, this one, and would turn on the uh, LED array with that 270 resistor across here. Then when it would see motion and turn it up to full brightness, there was a pair of uh, 4 ohm or a pair of uh, pair of 2 ohm. There we are. Yeah, there was a pair of 2 ohm resistors. So there was basically 1 ohm that would turn on the array that would sync through that uh, yeah, through that transistor. So right now, this one doesn't do anything, and this one only comes on when there's actual movement. And you can see the rest of the controls. There's the uh, diode to protect the battery from the solar panel. And then we have some power, voltage regulator there, some capacitors, the uh, back of the infrared detector, and then the microcontroller. So what I'm going to do after this video is I'm going to get this uh, panel out here, get this thing out, it's probably glued in, and then I'm going to get a piece of circuit board and cut that to fit in here, and then I'll mount my LEDs to it. At least that's my plan right now. Um, I might switch it up a little and maybe put... Uh, I don't know, maybe just do one cob. I have some of those those cheap light switch um, LEDs with the single, with the double cobs on each side. I could just take one of those and put one of those in here too. That would work. But first I'm going to take this out. So let's cut the wires and I will leave just, and they're marked on the board, but it just makes it a little easier. I just leave a little bit just so you can... Yeah, you know, it makes it easier for the for when I get back in there and remember which one goes where, a little visual cue. Then move the switch over here. Now let's see if we can just kind of push. Usually this hot glue will just kind of break loose. Let's see if we can dig it out without stabbing myself. Oh yep. It's coming out like a plug. That's what I was hoping. Alright, I got some more wires pulling through, but it's putting stress. So, let's see if I can, without cutting the wire, let's see if I can cut this glue away from the wire. I guess it really doesn't matter. I'm not going to be reusing this panel. So, yeah, you know what? Let's just snip them. So now that plug is out, I should be able to get this underneath. Yep. Let's get the sponger. Budger up under there, get the screwdriver out. Yeah, it just feels like there's some double sided tape or maybe an adhesive pad. Some three, yep, there it is. It's just double sided tape. Yeah, foamy tape. That stuff's pretty strong though. There we are. Yeah, this stuff, it's, it's surprisingly strong once it sets up. And then here is the LED panel. They're, what are they, 0805s maybe? I don't know. I'm not really good at my LED package sizes. They just did it on the uh, on this PCB. They mounted them and then they just poured resin on top. You can kind of see when the light washes past each of the LEDs, it distorts around them. So you can see that they're just right under that. Let's 
Let's see, can we get can we get under it? So maybe if I crack it. Nah. That'll just ruin it. I mean this thing's trash anyway, but be really hard to reuse. I'd have to solder these little those little thingies there. So let's get back to this. This is what I want to work with. And interestingly, it has a very unusual pattern in the molding. That must be from where they cleaned up the mold. I mean, it almost looks like somebody took a 3D printed shell and then created a mold out of it just by the way the lines are, but I guess if you look at it a little tighter, it looks more like chatter marks from a worn out mill. Now this format of light is pretty common. You'll see these all over eBay under different names. So I'm sure there's just, you know, one or two factories cranking out the uh, housings and then everybody in the village is putting their stamp on it and then sending them out. Something to be said for that. It's good to have local industry. If I can clean all this off, I might not have to build a circuit board. I was kind of thinking this was going to be more open and I'd have to, but if I can clean all this stuff off. I might be able to just build something right in here, drill some holes, mount some, you know, some uh, five millimeter top hats and be done with it. Hmm. Well, I don't know then. Let's try, uh, let's try something actually. I've, uh, I've never, I don't think I've ever done this. But what is your opinion? Should I mount a couple five millimeter warm white top hats in here? Should I do the single cob across? Maybe dual cob if they'll fit? Uh, should I maybe do slow flash RGB LEDs maybe? I don't know. I'm just trying to think of something. I just want it to be a nice little night light to hang in the hallway. You know, maybe something you know not this obviously because this is more useful for usb stuff but you know maybe just one led here shining out i don't know uh, let me know put it in the uh comments below if you don't mind and uh if you don't really care then don't worry about it i'll probably think of it at some point but for now we're gonna end the video thanks for watching